Okay, here we go, part two. So in our last video, we talked about party realignment. And what we're gonna talk about now is a phenomenon that's actually a phenomenon that is actually much more common nowadays. And that is something called party de-alignment. And party de-alignment is a phenomenon that is synonymous with the rise of third parties. So if a realignment is blocks coming together to form a party, de-alignment is when one of those blocks breaks off and forms its own third party. So what happens is that parties are supposed to be broad, you know, big tents. If they're going to be successful, they have to have a lot of people, uh, you know, under them. And so what happens sometimes is one of those blocks feels like the, the party is taking them for granted, is not dealing with their issue anymore. And so they break away and oftentimes they form a third party. Now, of course, uh, we all know there's some very, very famous third parties in American history. Uh, by far the most successful third party in American history uh, was the Populist Party. Uh, remember, in, in 1896 and, and 1900 as well, I believe, um, the Democratic Party didn't even nominate anybody um, because they liked William Jennings Bryan, who lost twice, uh, two times in a row, uh, but, the, but he was a populist. And what happened was the Democrats liked the populist so much they adopted him as their candidate. But other than that, third parties tend not to fare well in America, as we know, because of the, the, the Electoral College and because of the strict and broad constructionalist ways of interpreting the Constitution, third parties tend not to do too well. But two examples in modern history I want to use to demonstrate this concept of, uh, of breaking apart, of, of de-alignment. Uh, let's take the very first election that I paid attention to in my life, 1992. In 1992, you had the sitting president, George H.W. Bush. He was a Republican, he was popular, he had a really high approval rating, but then all of a sudden, the economy begins to tank. The Democrat that year is a, is a, is a five-term governor from the state of Arkansas named Bill Clinton. And of course, what happened was, you had the rise of a third party candidate. Uh, a Texas billionaire by, by the name of H. Ross Perot. And Perot ran on a platform of better government, that the budget was bloated, that government didn't work, uh, that, that things were inefficient. Now, there's no question that voters who really take government efficiency and balanced budgets as their top issue typically are going to vote for Republicans. So here's what happened in 1992. You had a three-man race you had Bill Clinton, the Democrat, you had George H.W. Bush, the Republican, and then you had H. Ross Perot as what they called the Reform Party candidate. It was a third party. Well, what happened was that block of Republican voters who see that budgets and good government is their big issue, they broke away. They broke away from the Republican Party and they went and voted for Ross Perot. So what happened was that ultimately gave the election to Bill Clinton. Why? because it splintered the Republican vote. It's the exact same thing that happened in 1912. Remember, in 1912, the sitting president is William Howard Taft. He's the Republican. You have Woodrow Wilson, uh, who's the Democrat. And of course, Teddy Roosevelt doesn't get the nomination from the Republican Party, so he runs as a third party, a bull moose. He's as strong as a bull moose. And so the bull moose party and the Republican Party split the vote in 1912, thus giving the election to Woodrow Wilson uh, and changing American history forever, by the way. So the, the, the knock on third parties is that because they de-align de themselves from one of the major parties, it actually plays the role of spoiler. A spoiler is where you uh, cause the party you're closer to to lose. Clearly, Roosevelt was closer to Taft than Wilson, and yet by de-aligning and running as a third party, you handed the election to Wilson. In 1992, clearly Ross Perot was closer to George H.W. Bush politically, but by joining the race and getting something like 17% of the vote, which almost all would have gone to George H.W. Bush, he gave the election to Bill Clinton. And of course, the most modern example is 2000. And in 2000, you had George W. Bush, the Republican, and you had the sitting Vice President Al Gore as the Democrat nominee. And of course, what was that one issue? What was that one voting block that was really unhappy with the Democratic Party? You guessed it, the Green Party. Their one issue was the environment. And they had a, a, a very famous guy, a guy by the name of uh, Ralph Nader, 
who was uh, an advocate for consumer safety. He was already famous in the country. Um, and he was you know, very liberal on the issue of the environment. And I know in the year 2014 or 2015, it's kind of weird to think that Al Gore might not have been seen as a big enough environmentalist to satisfy people, but this is 2000 Al Gore. This is all before An Inconvenient Truth and the Nobel Prize and the book and all, all that. It's way before that. And so the Green Party breaks off from the Democratic Party in 2000. Uh, they, they garner something like 3, 4, 5% of the vote. Clearly enough, in a really close election, remember, Gore actually won the popular vote in 2000, but he barely lost Florida by just a little bit under 1,000 votes. If Ralph Nader isn't running, you got to think that Al Gore wins Florida and with it, the presidency. So once again, in 2000, 2000 you see a group break off, they de-align, they form a third party, and they act as a spoiler. Now, last thing I'll say about third parties here is that they tend to be single issue. They tend to have one issue. And, and the reason why I love third parties is because they make the country better. Um, and they tend to go away because they're so effective, their issue gets dealt with, and there's no reason for them to exist anymore. The abolitionist party went away after the Civil War. Uh, the populist party went away after the progressive era. Um, obviously, the Green Party isn't as powerful because both parties now consider the environment to be a huge issue. The Reform Party went away. Why? Because by 1997, we were balancing the budget. So notice, yes, third parties act as spoilers in the short run, but in the long run, they oftentimes do get their way. So keep that in mind. Uh, third parties tend to be very ideological, very narrowly focused, but they are very good at, 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 at introducing the importance of their issue to the country. So that's de-alignment, which is synonymous with the rise of third parties, and I hope this was helpful. I uh, hope to see everybody tomorrow, and have a good day.